My name is Alex William Smith by birth. These days I'm better known as Jonathan Ryle Hypnotist. I was formerly known as magician Alex Leroy. In 1998 I set out to expose the dishonest uh, activities of Baza Mahmood. Unfortunately this backfired landing me in prison as explained at circusofthemind.net. I became very much a victim of Maza Mahmood the fake sheikh and in the past couple of years um, it's come to light the proof and evidence that he hacked my phone, used unlawful information gathering and that he drugged my drinks as well as what I already knew that he manipulated and intimidated behind the scenes through his associates and basically outright lied. What follows, there are some clips from either episode one or episode two or episode three of Amazon Prime's uh, documentary which released on the 26th of September 2023 called The Fake Shake. These clips are used under fair usage, copyright exemption and the fact that I'm giving a critical review of the content. So review of episode two of The Fake Shake, Amazon Prime, released on the 26th of September 2023. Once again, it starts with the disclaimer, this series includes dramatic reconstruction based on witness accounts. Some events and characters have been modified or combined. This is a three part series and each episode's content should be viewed and understood in the context of the entire series. So, yeah, for the bigger picture, you need to watch all three is the definite message there. But he Interesting. Me to take them. And he took hundreds of photographs of both of us together. The thing is, everybody thought that they knew the fake shape. But I knew the man behind it. I knew it was a mammoth. His former partner, Z. Z double E. That alone may be worth watching episode two for. It does seem they're using the same intro every time, so watch closely. Play Spot Jonathan Royal outside the Old Bailey. Well, Mazar Mahmood, the journalist known as the fake Sheikh, has opened at the Old Bailey. It was so unbelievable, it was believable. You know, this can't be fake. For 30 years, he has reveled in hiding his identity. His anonymity, his secrecy, was the key to his entire act. The self-styled king of the sting turned there he is. to court every day beneath a balaclava. Statement from Paul McMullen. Early 2000s, the news of the world started phone hacking on an industrial scale. I assume by that it means that it was the early 2000s when they really stepped it up and did more of it because uh, receipts show that um, unlawful information gathering, most likely phone hacking, was used in 1998. Um, in my case, in 1997, in the John Alford Sting and in numerous others uh, that predate uh, 2000. There's receipts and evidence and ongoing High Court uh, cases that illustrate this. The news employed Glenn Mulcair as a private investigator to hack people. They did indeed, Glenn Mulcair, who incidentally has given me um, a statement for my ongoing appeal to get my convictions overturned, because it turns out it's most likely him that hacked my phone. So this is an interesting narrative that Paul McMullen is trying to spin. Let's see. Mazza had to up his game to prove that his old school techniques were worthwhile, worth, worth the budget, worth going for. So he's basically painting the picture that Mazza Mahmood hated phone hacking. He knew it was going on, uh, but he hated it. And that because it had come in and they would no longer need to spend loads of money on Mahmood style um, stings that because they could just listen to people's voicemail messages and whatnot that Mahmood had to step up his game so I'm assuming he's going to head in the direction of that's why he became more elaborate in his scams 
There's one unfortunate thing to that narrative that Paul McMullen is trying to spin, and that is the fact that receipts uh, exist showing um, that unlawful information gathering techniques, including phone hacking, were used on many Mazama Mood stories. And indeed, you can go on YouTube and see the video of Dr. Evan Harris talking about the settlement he got in the High Court and then talking about how there's evidence of numerous other Mazama Mood victims having their phones hacked. And there are currently, up 26 to September 2023, numerous cases in the work in the High Court that were filed during September 2022 where there are receipts and evidence proving uh, in connection with Mazama Mood, fake shake stories that unlawful information gathering and phone hacking was used. So it'd be interesting to see how this continues through this episode, but it seems they're trying to spin, or at least Paul McMullen is, the line that Mahmood was anti-phone hacking, which in that case, why did it take place so much with his stories? Bearing in mind what you're about to see is about the Beckham kidnap fiasco story that occurred in 2002, it begs the question, why did it take till 2014 and the collapse of the Talisa trial for the court to stop um, relying on Mahmood as a witness of truth? Especially when they knew back in 1994, but that's another story I'll talk about later. Just watch this for now. Various allegations and counter allegations about the News of the World evidence. The members of the gang stated that they were set up and it was all the idea of the informant. They were set up. It was the fabricated. And elsewhere were saying that the whole thing had been set up simply for a front page story. This was not the first time. The case was dramatically dropped today. Defence lawyers said there was no kidnap plot and their clients ended up in custody because of a flawed news of the world investigation. Fraud, a false, it's fake. Proven in 2002. Why would they, why would they carry on? For what, another 12 years till 2014 when the Talisa trial collapsed? It, it, it makes the mind boggle. Pay attention, we Sven. On a trip. He took us to the marina for lunch, and it was a beautiful yacht. And he says, that yacht is where I did my last story. He had said that he had done a sting on Sven Goran Eriksson. Sven Goran Eriksson, former Manchester United and England team manager. Well, the documentary goes into the Sven thing. Um, just to briefly mention that basically in 2006, as mentioned here in the Guardian article, Ericsson is to sue the news of the world. And as shown here in a Daily Mail article of the 11th of October 2017, former England manager Sven Goran Ericsson receives payout from fake shake sting um, where he'd sued for breach of confidence and um, privacy intrusion and whatnot. And they had to pay out. You're about to hear from Richard Devoy, Sven Goran Eriksson's lawyer. The content of the article was, was laughable. Huge chunks of it were wildly different from what had actually been said. Some of it was exaggerated, some of it was made up, some of it was just plain lies. Some of it made up, some of it exaggerated. Um, I remind you, as I've already shown you, the article um, Sven successfully sued the News of the World for breach of confidence, privacy intrusion and related matters, and they paid out, which um, speaks for itself. And indeed, they mention it here. Sven Goran Eriksson sued the News of the World for breach of confidence. He claims that the distortion of what had been said during confidential discussions was not in the public interest. The matter was settled. It was indeed. The News of the World made charitable donation and paid Ericsson's legal fees. You can see the article I mentioned earlier. Well, this guy Paul Samurai has been telling a sob story about their upbringing. 
his upbringing and how it related to Mahmood's upbringing in Birmingham and being part of an Asian family and the pressures of the culture and society. And ultimately, after the sob story, which I'm not saying it's not true, but it's being used as an excuse because apparently that caused them to become serial liars as children to impress and keep family and friends happy is basically the narrative being spun and I uh, see so trying to spin it that basically the mood couldn't help it his environmental conditioning made him this way watch it yourself and see what you think episode two of the fake shake he sums it up with you this know how he ticks because I tick in the same way Fumas, the end justifies the means. That's interesting because uh, in the, I can't remember call off the top of my head, if it's in the Levin's Inquiry, I think it is, Maz used that exact phrase, the end justifies the means, and then goes on to brag about never having got done for doing things that would obviously under other circumstances be considered illegal. What he admits to mention is that various judges, including the judge in Rodri Giggs' collapsed 1990 case, said that Mahmood should be investigated by the Crown Prosecution Service for illegally buying drugs and other things. The fact it never happened, well, that just raises more questions. I feel that Maz is misunderstood because people have this um, assumption that he's ruthless, mean, or will do anything to get a story which is so untrue and so unfair. Hang on a minute. Untrue, unfair, lying about people, editing tapes, for example, Roger Giggs' case in 1999 collapsed when the prosecution decided they could no longer rely on the taped evidence that Mahmood had supplied because it had been called into question. The fact that bits missing, stuff edited to make it look like things were said or done that weren't, stuff edited to make it look like things weren't done or said that were, which we also find happened in the Talisa case in 2014. Um, drugging people, hacking phones, uh, unlawful information gathering, intimidation behind the scenes, framing people. I'd say ruthless. I'd say unkind. I don't think so. You had changed the price from, I believe it was £50,000 to £200,000 because now he knew it was a Dubai princess. Okay, this is a slumdog millionaire story. I don't know the full circumstances uh, surrounding this story. At first hearing, it does appear that this is one of the rare few stories where Mahmood genuinely did a genuine story, where he genuinely helped um, a child. And I believe there's a handful of other stories over the years as well where he's done stuff that's genuinely helped uh, children escape. So, you know, credit where it's due. Some of his stuff genuinely did help and was truthful. But uh, that doesn't take away from the fact that the vast majority of drug stories or apparently counterfeit coin stories or supplying prostitute stories were largely stings, entrapments, where people have been drugged, phone hacked, manipulated behind the scenes, or just flat out lied about. That said, again, in the interest of fairness. The story came to him, and we were able to save this child. Holly's father says the paper has made false allegations against him. He says he's being framed. Police in India say they won't file any charges, and now say the matter is closed. Matter is closed. So was there not enough evidence? Was things taken out of context? I honestly don't know. He wanted power. Mm. He'd been interviewed by the BBC. But that wasn't enough. Maz's ambition was insatiable. He wanted real power. There's his friend, power Rebecca Brooks, family Wade. Break prime ministers, government. The power... That only tabloid editors have. Or apparently Mahmood had, because as we know, he bragged about having bent police officers in his pocket. In his autobiography, he made mention that he went for drinks with, um, you know, the high-ranking guy at the Met Police. And, um, well, yeah. 
he, 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 he had links and contact. I wonder if he had compromise on people, blackmail material. So what ambition power did he aspire to? Well, according to Paul Samurai. His ambition, he said to me, was to be the first Asian editor on Fleet Street. To succeed, he had to impress Rupert Murdoch. Uh... Yeah, the people at the very top, I would allege, and many others have, knew exactly what was going on and because it sold papers, they allowed it and encouraged it. And as we know, Mahmood did become the chief investigations editor of the News of the World. What a surprise. Mazza Mahmood and News UK were approached for comment but did not respond. Episode 2 ended. Mazza and the News of the World were a perfect marriage. But none of us expected it to end like it did. None of us. A number of celebrities are taking legal action against the News of the World over allegations of phone hacking. The Metropolitan Police have asked the paper for more information about the tactics of its reporters. And in terms of phone hacking or unlawful information uh, gathering, I filed a claim, Alex Smith versus News Group Newspapers, on the 30th of September 2022. Details at the bottom of the page of circusofthemind.net. And tons of other people in September 2022 who were fake shake victims have filed claims as well because there is evidence of phone hacking, unlawful information gathering. And as my blog page, circusofthemind.net, shows, there is evidence and a sworn statement from Steve Grayson that Mahmood drugged people, which is something that many, many people said over the years and is illustrated by the 1999 Roger Giggs case. Uh, editing of tapes um, was happening back in 1999, up to date. Most of all, remember this, I've shown on circusofthemind.net, mentioned there at the links uh, at the bottom of the page, the police and the Crown Prosecution Service knew back in 1994 due to a collapsed trial where they communicated with each other and said Mahmood should not and could not be considered a witness of truth any further. That was back in 1994. So why did they carry on letting things go as they did? Uh, episode two wise, well, it includes, I'm looking at my list here, his former girlfriend Z. Paul Samurai, News of the World tipster. Paul McMullen, former News of the World reporter. Alia Fox, a former News of the World reporter. Ian Horrocks, detective inspector who was worked on the Beckham fiasco case. Neil Wallace, News of the World executive. Paul Conyu, News of the World. Sven Goran Eriksson, uh, legal advisor. Richard DeVos on there and Paul Conyu. And then it's stock footage of uh, various things. Interesting. But it's definitely an entertainment style documentary rather than a hard hitting investigative documentary like the 2014 Panorama documentary presented by John Sweeney and put out by the BBC was. That is well worth watching and that's on circusofthemind.net.